ha ha. It just doesn't get to be any more fun than this, <laughs> no, Richard. No, you're right. The Tesla, we're going to talk about the Tesla Cybertruck unveil. Mm -hmm. This was the most disastrous unveiling Tesla has ever done. And I would suggest the most disastrous unveiling mm -hmm. of any product I've ever seen. I was howling out loud no, at the too. crowd and all the too, Tesla guys yeah. that have YouTube shows now that yeah. are all really, really yeah. enthusiastic yeah. about Tesla. Their eyes were this big. They looked mm -hmm. like ducks that had lost their mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. They wandered around the grounds praying for yep. Musk to come down and fix it or Bring something. another truck they, out. They were uh, just lost uh, as uh, hell. I was delighted with it, other than the presentation was mm -hmm. so bad. Mm -hmm. And Elon Musk is a uh, flipping genius. Mm -hmm. That was. He just is. He centered on exactly the truck thing. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean um, everybody thinks that trucks are for farmers who do work. Or construction yeah. guys. There are farmers who do do work. I don't know if any of them will ever have this truck. All advertising for pickup trucks is about how tough they are. They are built Ford tough. Mm -hmm. They're Ram bad or mm -hmm. something. Or their Chevy, uh, yeah, their Chevy top, yeah, manly, yeah, yeah. tough, durable mm -hmm. thing. That's right. Yeah. And Elon Musk has done what I think is the perfect truck at the perfect time. Now, understand, most of the guys that drive pickup trucks don't do a day's work in their life. Yep. They're all tax accountants. And they, yep. however. They identify with the big manly truck, some of them like me, or wide enough that getting in a car is kind of a problem. Higher up makes it easier. Yep. And so I uh, have always uh, driven a pickup truck uh, right through the Escalade here recently. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, an electric pickup truck is a dream. Mm-hmm. That I've not only had, but I built one, I, and it <laughs> drove good. I, it was my daily driver for years, and uh, mm -hmm. I've recently uh, converted it to Tesla drive mm -hmm. unit and hung it on a lift we in the it. other room, a nice waiting lift. my completion uh -huh. uh, sometime in 10 or 12 years yeah. after the Tesla pickup <laughs> truck comes out. But as a, a lad, my uh, grandfather was a farmer. And had a 54 uh, Studebaker pickup truck he called the flop eared son of a bitch because of the little wind mm -hmm. wings mm -hmm. that kind of hung out in the little round mirrors. Mm -hmm. It looked like a flop eared dog. Mm -hmm. And my father was, of course, a bricklayer and masonry contractor. So your dad has a truck mm -hmm. and your mom has a car, and that's just the game. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, That's middle um, America. So I identify with a truck and with the manly aspects of a truck mm -hmm. almost genetically. Now, Richard is here. He uh, not only is our, actually, who's running EVTV these <laughs> days, <laughs> aside from the few hours I show up in the afternoons to take calls from unhappy people. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, uh, you were actually kind of in the pickup truck business. I was in custom business. truck business for 20 years, very familiar with the, the customer and what they're You looking. near enough invented mm -hmm. the tonneau cover. I was one of the very early designs that, that were in that industry. I sure was. In the 70s and 80s, you had um, three basic configurations. An open bed, mm -hmm. a camper, which is like a thing that fits in the bed of the truck and hangs out over the roof, 
and uh, my choice was always the half shell. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, just a shell that goes up, oh, about roof height. Cab height. A uh, cab height. Mm -hmm. And then um, you, it kept you from getting access to things mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. So you kept throwing things in there until you sold the truck, at which point you had to drag yep. them all out. And you Rusty found shit that you've been all. lost <laughs> yeah. for years. Richard invented for the Chevy S10? It was a Chevy S10 was the main uh, product base, yes. Just a flat lid. Flat lid, yep. Exactly what and I'm... that uh, dramatically uh, cuts the drag, mm -hmm. increases the fuel um, mileage per gallon that you get with the truck, but it also lets you hide your stuff mm -hmm. and kind of lock your stuff up. Exactly. And uh, so he uh, built one, and while he had the truck out front, somebody stopped and bought it from him. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. And the next thing, you were doing a couple million dollars a year. Yep. And That's about the way it happened. It, it, it scaled up very rapidly, yes. It was a very popular item. And what do you call them, coppers? Or? I called it a uh, flush mount bed cover. Huh. Flush mount bed cover. And there uh, uh, was under the checkmate name. Checkmate flush mount bed, bed cover. Oh. Got a little friend helped me with my coffee. There you go. Uh, <laughs> he didn't drink. That's a protein. He didn't drink much. He didn't drink much. And though. he didn't know the backstroke apparently. <laughs> so poor little devil. I know. So uh, we're like um, truck guys, mm -hmm. and Elon Musk hit exactly mm -hmm. the right note. Mm -hmm. In a horribly long way, <laughs> but I'm very uh, excited about the truck. You saw the. Uh, I saw all of it. Yes. And what was your uh, impression? You know, my real first impression actually was uh, the fact that the outer skin, the basically the XY, and mm -hmm. the the stainless steel, which eliminated paint. Uh, as I mentioned to you, that is something that has been kicked around. And you have heard conversations for 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in well, I had gone to SEMAs and the different things, and they'd mm -hmm. already always had talked about if they made something out of sheeting, they wouldn't have the molding and the forming stamp machines. The stamping machines; those things actually get an, out of variance uh -huh. fairly quick. So you have a huge tooling cost, and this truck design has a huge tooling advantage. I, uh, several uh, observers uh, were kind of tongue-in-cheek referring to it as an origami truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Origami is mm -hmm. Japanese art of paper folding to make little mm -hmm. figures mm -hmm. and artistic things. You're not far wrong. This is not Elon Musk's original idea. It's an idea that's been kicking around a long time. Nobody's had the balls to do it. That's it, yeah. And basically, what he's referring to is an XY design. And that's where you get a huge sheet of stainless steel, mm -hmm. basically. And um, you uh, score it. Exactly. Yep. You kind of draw out the design on it and score it and cut out the uh, mm -hmm. little corners and wedgies with... Uh, Oh, a laser cutter laser. or a water jet, water I guess, jet. would do it. With, does water jets work on stainless they, steel? They possibly could, yeah. I mean, by now, I don't I know. wouldn't be surprised if it wouldn't. But uh, Or even a routering bit could possibly cut What it. he's done is taken a three millimeter thick sheet of uh, 301 stainless steel, mm -hmm. which he would have you believe was specially developed for uh, SpaceX. Not precisely. Um, 301 is about 17% chromium, about 7% nickel, maybe 2% manganese, a little silicon mixed in, about 1% with steel. And it gives it some properties. It comes in four uh, basic hardness. Mm-hmm. Quarter hard, 
half hard, three quarter hard, and full hard. <laughs> and this is a function of how it is annealed in the process of forming it. Mm -hmm. And the cold rolled process is how they get full hard. Mm -hmm. I suspect that the SpaceX and this one might be some sort of super pressure cold rolled where they mm -hmm. get it even harder than what a full hard mm -hmm. would be. He implied they had a very specific hardness, I assume beyond full hard. Mm -hmm. And um, so you lay all this out flat and you cut mm -hmm. it flat yep. and you score it flat. T Tremendously simpler. I mean, it is. The and then materials you do fold it up like a Japanese mm -hmm. origami mm -hmm. and then you weld it. Mm -hmm. And 301 stainless steel, believe it or not, is quite weldable. But yeah, they they, they do use 301 stainless for aircraft, mm -hmm. um, but for subway cars and even appliances. And so it's uh, got a lot of uh, advantages. As a finish, it should terminate the complaints about Tesla's paint and finish. Paint, yeah, it won't be anything. Yeah, there because won't be any. it won't be. It any. Won't, any. That's right. It won't scratch. It won't have to be protected. And now, the reason this idea has been kicking around a long time is it eliminates stamping machines. Mm -hmm. um, it lends mm -hmm. itself very well to uh, robot laser mm -hmm. assembly on the line. And uh, it, you basically take a sheet or two sheets mm -hmm. of stainless steel and fold them up into a truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, actually a huge uh, cost savings in the formation of a body. And I would say that's really probably what Detroit's talking about today. Uh -huh. That was really kind of always their fantasy. Well, no, I, that's what you were saying. They've yeah. been talking They've about been it for talking 20 about years. 20 or 30 years for something like Nobody's this. Nobody's ever not. figured out a way to pull the trigger because it winds up looking like Japanese origami. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. Then how do you attach things and understand 301 stainless drilling a hole in <laughs> yeah. it is a hard day's work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, and, and therein lies the tale. I, so you vastly reduce the um, work and the equipment needed to assemble the body of the truck. Mm -hmm. Paint shop, what paint shop? Yeah. You don't need no stinking that paint is, shop. That's another huge cost. There and then are, you stick yeah. on some vacuum formed black plastic trim mm -hmm. that you can have in any color you want as long as it's black. Mm -hmm. Actually, they could make it any color mm -hmm. you want, yep. and um, you, uh, and there you go. Yeah, it, it, that's a a big part of the auto industry. You have volatile chemicals. You have dipping. You have extremely high inefficiencies. They don't get. You know, it, it is it is a big part of the auto industry. Is the paint. So, so paint went away. Paint went away. And, and stamping went away. And stamping went away. And a whole bunch of stuff a whole just bunch goes of away. Stuff, yeah. and but what do you wind up with? Stainless steel. Uh, I detest it because you can't drill a hole in it. Mm -mm. I like to drill holes in stuff. Ever since I got my first power drill, you got it. Yeah. I want stuff I can drill holes in. But stainless is very tough to do that with. Um, but imagine if the idea is to make a tough truck, mm -hmm. a manly up. truck, mm -hmm. a truck that you can beat up and it doesn't show a lot of damage. Well, that's one of the reasons the guys really don't take those trucks that are on TV out in the woods anymore. Uh -huh. They have so much in them, a scratch, maybe they get their paint scratched uh -huh. when you get off road. And so, so how much do they have in them? You know, yeah, yeah, $50,000. Oh, no, Richard. The average price of a pickup truck in the United States now is $48,000. Uh, I remember distinctly 
when you could get a truck for fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars and a similar car would be twenty seven. Mm -hmm. That those days are gone. The average price is forty eight thousand. But that's not for the coal burner ram do mm -hmm. the uh you're thinking of. I'll pull, I'll Those go up to about a hundred. Yeah, I know. I know. If you want to be the mm -hmm. big guy yeah, with yeah. a truck, mm -hmm. it's a hundred grand mm -hmm. these days. Yep. If you uh, want to tow something big, you have to have the bigger truck. Well, and my bigger truck, you're starting at seventy or eighty. Yep. Yep. But you can eat up a hundred spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Real quick, mm -hmm. if you want a big diesel dually. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And that's just the way it is. So, some other notables just on the body. Is there anything else? Mm -mm. You see any headlights on it? Nope. It has a light bar yep. around that's... the top edge of the front. Yeah. So you can't bust out a headlight because mm -mm. there ain't any headlights. Mm -mm. And you can't bust out the grill because there, there ain't, ain't any grill. grill. That's right. And you can't dent the bumper because it doesn't really have a bumper. Yep. It's got a piece of plastic on the bottom that should be reasonably inexpensive to replace. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it is a flat, blunt wall of stainless steel. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And that goes down the side and across the back. Now your lights on the back is another bar mm -hmm. across the top it back. It is, yeah. And I'm going to guess that's going to be real hard to crack one of those light bars. Mm -hmm. yep. And I've cracked headlights before. Everybody. And so he started out his unveil pretty good. And uh, he had... A friend's, a Holzhausen, come out with a 12-pound sledge. I saw that. It looked great. And he had a door of a truck, and the sledge should have decimated it. But we're talking about a bunch of Californians. Mm -hmm. And Franz has given up some of his CrossFit training because <laughs> yeah. of the hours he's putting in at Tesla. And he's not precisely the freaking Marlboro man, yeah, okay. now is he? I got the hammer. He picked it up okay. Uh, well, he, he did get it in the air. He got it in the air. So. But he's got a pretty lame swing. <laughs> yeah, he did. Dope. If he's going to lay down about six miles of railroad track with that ha hammer, he needs to uh, get in shape. Yeah, he has to. That's not the way you throw a hammer like that. No, it isn't. <laughs> that's kind of how your sister throws yeah, a hammer. Yeah, that's right. Like that. He didn't do much with it. Richard had three older Three sisters. sisters. So, now well, some of them were pretty manly sisters. Yeah, but they still, could have hammered they, something, yeah. Kathy could certainly whack you with a hammer, yeah. I would imagine. But um, maybe better than Franz. Yeah. But he did manage to ding up a door <laughs> off of a... Ostensibly a pickup truck. I didn't put a stage. dent in it. I mean, you could see a wrinkle. He put two dents. He put a couple of dents. They're kind of like nipple I did dents. that, you know. But I got the idea. And then he took the hammer to the stainless truck. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens when you whack a stainless steel 301 three millimeter, uh, which is just under an eighth of an inch mm -hmm. piece of. Um, 301 stainless. Uh, nothing. Mm -mm. And you know what? If you keyed it or mm. ran it through the woods and scratched mm. it up, you know how you fix that? SOS pad. Kinda With a buffer. Buffer? I mean, it would just come right out, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was my probably my I mean, if reaction. it's really bad, a wheel, mm -hmm. you know, but for two seconds. No visit to the paint shop. No. And they, <laughs> no. they open a can of paint and it's 450 bucks now. Uh, so what's the downside of stainless steel? Well, paint won't stick to it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to dress this up, it's like a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. You could vinyl the crap out of yep. it. You could write your name. You could put cover it with I Trump have. 2020 stickers. I mean, that'd work. Um, skins. The, leopard uh, skins. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. you want. Uh, 
Yeah, you, you, it's, it's your chalkboard. <laughs> it's your baby. chalkboard at that point. You, and a man has got to add something to it. Well, it, no, and that's the other thing about a truck is you got to be able to customize yeah, it a little yeah. bit. So, um, was I shocked by the body? Uh, no, he pretty much described it as a futuristic uh, armor mm -hmm, personnel mm -hmm. carrier. And it looks uh, very reminiscent of a uh, Lockheed mm -hmm. F-117. That's a little bit before Stealth most girls. Uh, they uh, introduced in the 80s, but it was the very modern at that time stealth fighter. I remember that stealth fighter. That's what in I thought. black too. Uh, kind uh, uh, of uh, 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 radar absorbent paint, mm -hmm. but with the same angles and so forth. I have heard a lot of... Uh, um, wind resistance uh, experts mm -hmm. talking about this truck. Let me just say this. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, none. Uh, that shape is actually quite good, which is why you would use it on a F-117 uh, mm -hmm. fighter aircraft. Absolutely, yes. Which actually, it was a air-to-ground aircraft, but everybody thought it looked like a fighter, so mm -hmm. they called it a fighter, I remember a Nighthawk, that. but yeah. it was an air-to-ground attack aircraft that was uh, uh, supposed to be invisible to radar. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if I'd test this, but you may get away with some stuff on the road with the radar guns. I don't know. Yeah, that would be the next thing. Highway patrolmen might be. Yeah, how visible is them. this to uh, radar? Mm -hmm. um, but that shape is actually surprisingly aerodynamic, and it does have the uh, taper on the back, the requisite mm -hmm. taper that um, makes that uh, um, uh, delamination. Um, well, that's where all actually the start to work for yeah. you a little bit, yep. uh, believe it or not. Yep. And so aerodynamically, this is not the disaster that people are portraying mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, the blunt nose is a little lossy, but it's a pickup truck. Mm -hmm. It's not a sports car. Um, it also looks to me remarkably like our newest... Zumwalt, I was in Zumwalt's Navy, by the way, uh, at mm -hmm. Zumwalt. That, uh, they have work. a new uh, destroyer class yeah, called I've Zumwalt's seen those. and I've some seen those. Um, missile frigates as well, using mm -hmm. the same basic architecture, slope side and angular, mm -hmm. uh, and low profile for radar ships. Mm -hmm. And, and I, uh, I would assume they would be thinking X, Y also for some of their production costs. It's not precisely X, Y when you're doing a ship, but yeah, lots of flat panels. Lots of flat panels, yeah. And if you also notice on the uh, Cybertruck, all the glass is flat. Mm -hmm. There's no curved glass in the truck. Mm -hmm. It's a flat back and light, that. a flat roof light, a flat mm -hmm. windshield, and flat windows. Mm -hmm. And I cannot express how that simplifies the uh, construction. Oh, yeah, exactly. The curved glass is uh, uh, very much in vogue for a long time because it's expensive and it looks cool. When we emerged from an era of flat yeah. glass, uh, but there's nothing innately good about it. It just makes the glass expensive to replace. Until the insurance company finds out about it and they yeah. get all the bills for replacing broken windshields. Yeah, like we had to replace yeah. on the model uh, S. Uh, yep. So, all that looks very good to me. Yep. Uh, what else do I like about that body? Um, Everyone went in shock when it came out, uh, first rolled out. I mean, there were people fainting in the audience mm -hmm. and crying. Um, and not me. I thought it was kind of what he described. Mm -hmm. I can't say I would have expected exactly that. But that, that was, uh, I that got was it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be a truck. I think it is one. It is a truck. Now, um, how do I feel about how odd it looks? 
Well, you know, I have a sense of whimsy anyway <laughs> about these things. <clears throat> I'm going to predict right now that it'll be a long time before you see a movie or a TV show that doesn't feature this truck the, free advertising for Tesla. Yep, yep. And then if you're cool, you have one. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have one, you're a deplorable. Mm -hmm. And I, the deplorables may want them too, though. I think a lot of that's the where I'm going. going. That's right. So, and yeah. so um, it's. Uh, I predict that the shock. I predict that the shock of that design will be replaced by awe at the genius of it. Mm -hmm. I do not connect it at all to any of the vehicles, uh, the um, Blade Runner, um, the uh, uh, Back to the Future, the DeLorean. DeLorean. That's, uh, yeah. The DeLorean was kind of, kind of after the same concept, thing. yeah, which oh, was stainless. No and pain. low manufacturing mm -hmm, costs. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it shares some thing there. To me, it looks like it was born of the marriage mm -hmm. of an H1 Hummer, and I had the second civilian Hummer mm -hmm. after Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Uh, I remember in the early that story. 1990s, um, and had it for many years, and gave it to a stepson who, immediate or a, a son-in-law who immediately. Got a D, D, D U I <laughs> and wound up with seventeen thousand dollars worth of classes and fines and stuff. Oh, and wound up having to sell it to buy his freedom. Buy his freedom. No. And um, so, uh, but it was uh, oh my god! It was uh, chrome bumpers and pinstripes and mm -hmm. um, burlwood interior. I had uh, air lockers on it and uh, a Whipple supercharger I, yep. and. Uh, Ox tanks. It was so tricked out. It was uh, ridiculous, and uh, and I loved it. And that looks like the mother. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put a picture up here of the uh, city <laughs> car of uh, I the remember 1980s those. when I, I had, was in St. Louis. I had the cord hanging the, out the front. The, the yeah. little cheese wedge uh, that went 45 miles an hour yeah, for that about were really 20 long miles. Extension cord. And was the electric car of yeah, 1984. I remember. I remember. And uh, we had a dealership for them in St. Louis. I, I almost bought car. one of those cars, but they were over five thousand dollars, and uh, I just couldn't quite see it. So yeah. I built a Pinto, and it got eleven miles on a charge, <laughs> and uh, didn't have a controller. And we just switched the batteries between different configurations <laughs> to do different speeds. So that was my first attempt at an electric car. Kind of a fail, but uh, it, it was uh, born of envy of the city car. I remember that car very And well. so I think Elon's kind of a mule, mm -hmm. uh, born of a, uh, a city car father and a Hummer H1 yeah, pickup about right. as the uh, mother. And that's what you get is a stainless steel baby about that size. Mm-hmm. Might have been a DeLorean somewhere in the closet. I don't know. Let's talk about the 800-pound elephant in the room. They, I said flat glass. Mm -hmm. Well, if you recall in the semi-truck, he uh, guaranteed the windshield would protect you from a nuclear blast. Mm -hmm. And if it failed, he'd give you your money back <laughs> yeah. in case of nuclear war. Uh. Well, this is actually a, uh, a polymer and glass laminate, uh, somewhat similar to the Gorilla Glass they use on iPhones, mm -hmm. uh, obviously thicker. And they did a idiotic demonstration, I thought, of a uh, guy in Blade Runner garb dropping uh, the marble through the tube at various heights. Uh, onto a piece of glass. That would have been enough right there for me. It was a garish, mm -hmm. um, juvenile, and fairly effective. Mm -hmm. I, was, I bought into it. I bought in at that moment. Everything was fine. The world was at peace. 
So, Franz, you manly son of a Marlboro man. Yeah, a little wrist. Yeah, yeah little wrist put a little that. wrist into it and throw this uh, uh, chromium uh, uh, trailer hitch ball uh, uh, into the wind and show the folks at home. He's barely lobbed it. And he hauled off and did a little girl pitch of this ball into the front Probably, driver's uh, window, which promptly... <laughs> blossomed into this big ugly uh, break. He, yeah, it was a, it wasn't a crack. It wasn't a few little cracks. It was a shatter. I mean, it, he thumped it. And uh, Elon Elon noted that at least it didn't go through. Yeah, call. I feel better already. Yeah. yeah. And so he had him do it again. That's when I kind of fell off the chair about that <laughs> point. Yeah. So they're not well. I didn't know. It, is this planned? I don't think it was. My take at this point is that was an impromptu action, and that was just prototype glass in there. I think, but that's just my take. Uh, well, obviously you're right. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm like, <laughs> is this like a joke or what? And uh, then I saw Elon's face, and he was notably uh, flushed. Whoa, Nobody he was flushed. smoked. Mm -hmm. There was smoke coming out of both ears. He Nobody was uh, flushed, had his jaws clenched so tight. Oh, my goodness, you couldn't have pounded a nail between his teeth. And he was furious and basically ditched the rest of the mm -hmm. presentation. Yeah, he did. I don't know what cut he was going to say, but I'm pretty sure he didn't say it. Uh, the rest of it, it was hurried through, and, and he... Ran from the stage. Well, I feel for the guy. I wish it wouldn't have happened to him. You know, but you're such a kind person. I know. I think they didn't plan it. It was impromptu, and somebody probably slipped just a non-production piece of glass in there without his knowledge, and they didn't know he was going to do that. Hmm. Nobody uh, asked. He is a genius, but uh, on execution, <laughs> he's. Uh, Got an awful lot of irons in the fire, and, now, and I, this was the whole thing looked uh, unprepared to me. I would say the old lesson is never go off script mm. on any kind of product piece like that. Stay mm. to the script, so you would have known every maneuver and every word you were going to say. Well, it's probably they had apparently he says tested it, throwing monkey wrenches at it, and hammers and all kinds of stuff. But that this guy threw this ball. I thought, yeah, and it was not really a very hard throw. I mean, no, it was. It was not a baseball. Put your elbow back. So for the rest of the presentation, and the way the vehicle was spotted was kind of side on. Mm -hmm. You never do that. <laughs> it's called a three-quarter view. And that's just how you stage things, mm -hmm. this is a mm -hmm. three-quarter view. But he had all this side mm -hmm. stuff set up, I think. And so for the rest of the presentation, here's Elon Musk standing in front of this obviously wrecked <laughs> truck <laughs> yeah. with two broken windows, yeah. and it just did not work. It was a unpleasant from that point on, yes. And I to watch all the little ducklings who'd gone out there to see the thing and had their cameras and their selfie sticks doing live streams. I don't know. Uh, pranced around in panic, wide-eyed, talking nonsense smack, mm -hmm. trying to salvage something of the situation was just the funniest thing I've seen in months. Uh, you... Everybody, it just was a... Uh, they were shattered. Moment. They were, yeah. Which kind of misses the point that this truck is a work of genius. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In my estimation. Yeah. What did I like about Well, here's something I didn't like. Is they didn't really give us any information. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet what size battery pack, what size motors, mm -mm. Um, what the um, capacity of the 240 volt AC inverter is that you can use your power tools with. And power that tools would, covers uh, a, uh, a, uh, and that would a be multitude a, of sins, a brick saw, 
uh, sucks quite a bit of power and now, can be sucking it for a while. And so do off-site coolers, uh, which would probably be a big one if you had need for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is no mention of how much electrical power you can pr produce was uh, bizarre. I, I don't know that the whole thing wasn't and up. after mention of an air compressor, because you already have one for the air shock um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, system, suspension system, <laughs> well, that's not a very big compressor. Yeah. Maybe a nailer or something, but... Uh, yeah, you wouldn't paint, but you might, yeah, I can see it, you know, maybe a little bit. It is lifting a fairly heavy truck, so it's probably... The shocker... Uh, on the plus side that everybody went gaga for was the price. Mm -hmm. Basically, three trim levels. The base trim is thirty nine nine ninety five. That's under forty. Now, just the similarly equipped Ford F one fifty, I've kind of priced out at about forty three eight. Mm -hmm. Uh, and really, the Tesla exceeds it in all respects. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a $400, $500 a month truck payment. That's got a Model S drive unit in the back. I've got a Model S. Mm -hmm. Everybody, yeah. It's not four-wheel drive, and it drives fine. It probably, yeah. Now, this is, uh, I think, 7,000 towing weight. All three of them are 3,500-pound uh, bed capacity. Well, hell, that's a two-and-a-half-ton truck. That's bigger than anything that's out there. Like that's like a Ford F-450. Right. That's bigger than anything out there. And so uh, great capacity that towing is 7,000 pounds on the base mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. um, all of them are 6.5-foot, 100-square-foot storage beds. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, the mid trim, which is what I registered for, mm -hmm. uh, was a uh, forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars, and that gets you a Model Three rear wheel drive unit in the front, about two hundred seventy five horsepower, and a Model S in the back. Yep. Now this is probably going to be a five thousand pound vehicle. But a S ain't no slacker. It's 40, uh, no. 4,900 pounds. So uh, this has got tons of power. And uh, uh, four and a half seconds, zero to 60 uh, mm -hmm. is what it's rated in the mid trim. trim. And, uh, but that motor trend calculates that at about 690 horsepower, 824 foot pounds. And that's basically what they're putting in the all-wheel drive S now. Uh, it's going to scat. I mean, it's that, called the Raven yeah. drivetrain, and that's what's in your P100D and so forth. Um, the uh, the one they're working on is called Plaid. I, ludicrous. And, yeah. and that, well, Plaid is after Ludicrous. Is it after Ludicrous? ludicrous breed, Let's go to Plaid. Go to Plaid. And that is what they're talking about for the new Roadster. Mm -hmm. And they have an S on the Newburgering, Newburgering uh, right now that's uh, outrunning the Porsche Taycan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is Plaid. That's Plaid. And that is two separate motors on the rear that are torque vectoring, plus the Model 3 uh, motor in the front. But... And that's plaid. And that will be the third trim level at $69,995. Um, but uh, it's not going to be available until a year after mm -hmm. the um, one and two trims. Um, that's still enough. The 39000 get 250 miles, um, 300 on the 49000 and it's reportedly 500 Miles that's uh, on the uh, um, basically the uh, um, uh, 69,000 mm -hmm. version or the plaid equipped. Well, 
What do I think that is? I think it's a standard Model S 85 kilowatt pack mm -hmm. on the uh, base trim. Uh, kind of an enhanced 120 kilowatt. Uh, that's sort of the next uh, thing for the P100D. Mm -hmm. And um, probably two of the uh, of those on the the top the stack on the top uh, um, top of the line sixty nine thousand seven thousand pounds of towing in the thirty nine level let's call them one two and three two was ten thousand pounds towing big subject big point and uh, three is fourteen thousand pounds I think the next point I would make is the towing situation is going to be huge to truck owners. Everybody now basically buys a truck to pull something. Uh -huh. They pull a camper, they pull their custom little car, they pull a big boat. The reason you buy a pickup truck almost in today's world is for towing. Uh -huh. And that electric motor system is going to have torque all the way through the cycle, all the way through the acceleration of the vehicle and pretty even torque going up and down hills. Uh -huh. I think How much does your zombie apocalypse trailer weigh? I'm around 2,000 pounds, uh -huh. and it puts a lot of... I've got on. a 28-foot cobalt power mm -hmm. boat. It's 55, 50. Mm -hmm. A good-sized camper is right in there, 6,000, yeah, 4,000 to 6,000. So the base does 7,000. Mm-hmm. What? It's going to cover everything that <coughs> is within normal ranges. That's out there towing. Good size, 20, 30 foot campers, uh, fairly big boats. I'm pulling a car, another car, a race car. If you're towing something over 14,000 pounds with a 5,000 pound vehicle, you don't want to stop going you're, downhill. You're an idiot. Yeah. You don't want to stop going downhill. You can't stop it. It's yeah. not what it can pull, it's what it, it can, can stop. push. Yeah. <laughs> And they cheat on that with electric brakes, mm -hmm. yep. like my boat has yep. a yep. thing in the tongue. If you mm -hmm. push on it, it applies but brakes to the... Uh, I, that is the real reason almost all these modern people buy a pickup truck now. Uh -huh. It's for towing, towing their toys. Yeah. So that's going to be huge. The uh, big thing with me is I'm 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. And getting in the Model S is an exercise. Mm -hmm. And sitting down facing aft, out and then getting my head in <laughs> and then pulling in one leg and then pulling in the other leg. By the time I'm in it, I don't want to have to get out again. You don't want to get out of the Model time. S anyhow. My comment always on the Model S is it's a car you drive that you feel better mm -hmm. when you get, you know, after the ride. You don't even feel like you've been in, you know. It's almost like a... It's a nice it ride. It's a nice ride. The entry and exit is a problem. Yes, it is. Not for you, but not it not is for me. For me. But, no. I'm I can not see as that. flexible as I once was, but I am as wide as I am tall, Yeah, which means I have to roll into it <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Good little shoehorn. Believe it or not, the Model 3 is easier. Mm -hmm. But the reason I like the Escalade was you open up the door and kind of climb up into it. I can do mm -hmm. that, yep. and I like sitting up high, but it's like I don't want to have to fight my way mm -hmm. into the vehicle wondering if I'll ever be able to be extracted <laughs> yeah. without uh, emergency medical technicians uh, to assist. And if you slightly vary it, you <laughs> pop your head. I've popped uh, my head a few times. Well, I got Boy. a running board on the escalator. I popped the door. Step up, yep. step in, and I'm in a seat the size of a recliner. Mm -hmm. And I got plenty of shoulder room, plenty of headroom. A nice interior. You've got interior. that yeah. with this interior. I know. It seats six people. It has an enormous yeah. amount of headroom. Mm -hmm. And the front, which will seat three adults. Mm -hmm. There's no tunnel to it, of course. You got the girl in the middle, mm. junior on the other side. Uh huh. You're all wearing you got it. You're good. Well, it gets even better. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't go with you, mm -hmm. that center seat folds down into the most massive console, center console I've ever seen. I, 
it looked like about five cup holders in it. You would need that. And plenty of storage. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a desk. Mm -hmm. And that, a working guy would work Sign that. me up, man. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. The uh, That's where you sign the paychecks, mm -hmm. right there in the truck. You do your little drawings, you get your work out, you get your map, whatever. Um, it has, a, a, instead of a rear view mirror, it has a rear view camera. Which? I got to tell you, one of the features I'd like to see on the Model 3 is just have it default to the rear cam. Mm -hmm. I've gotten so used to using that mm -hmm. rear cam. I'm not, not when I'm backing up, I want to use it all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. you can set it, but you have to keep selecting mm -hmm. that. Uh, I wish it just defaulted to that. You had to select to get anything well, else. That truck's going to have to. And so the truck... Actually, with the tonneau retracted, you have flat glass behind you and can see into the bed. And it was a lit bed on the mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the demonstration ride. And he had a some type of an operating system back there too, a control panel that he flipped open. Oh, really? So he's got it, which another thing that also makes sense. You know, the mm -hmm. side storage and. Your connectivity, whatever you have back there, is right in that bed. Yeah, yeah. And really, and he didn't show where the outlets were for the. Well, he plugged in the ATV back there. That's the why I thought it's in the bed. That's where I would think yeah, it should be. Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, but the visibility, uh, you know, you've got glass above you, a flat glass windshield, uh, mm -hmm. a rear view camera. Uh, they're going to see, yeah. It's going to be great. They're going to see everything. That's right. Tons of head and shoulder room, easy entry and exit. Mm -hmm. This is the. It's right on. All it's that. what I wanted in a <laughs> Tesla. And I got to yeah. tell you guys, I, yeah, I understand what it looks like going down the road. I'm not running down the road alongside the car. I don't know what it looks like when I'm driving. That's absolutely But I spend yeah. a lot of time in the car driving, looking out. And that look out over the hood is what defines the vehicle to me mm -hmm. and what it's like inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody else is looking at me. I'm looking out at them. That yeah, that would be another take. Absolutely. Yeah. Why worry about what's on the outside? Everybody so, else is looking at it. You're right. looking at the inside. And so I thought the interior was uh, fantastic. Um, and... Uh, Kind of unusual, I'm told that dash is a uh, compressed uh, recycled paper. Well, yeah. I don't know what that's about. They really did not talk about it much or address it. Like I say, the whole presentation was sort of abbreviated because of the, uh, what do you call it, wardrobe fail. <laughs> Janet Jackson's the bra uh, fell off. window fell off, and uh, after that, the Super Bowl was forgotten. They needed a five-second delay in there, maybe. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Next time, have uh, a delay, and maybe you'll be okay. What else do you want in the truck? Well, storage. Uh-huh, absolutely. Nobody at any time showed the trunk, front tr trunk, but no, I'm told there is one, and, and that then it's large. That I don't see why there wouldn't be, but uh, nobody ever showed that at all. And nobody in the unveil ever showed. Uh, Motor Trend has some photos of it. A uh, be beneath the bed secure storage area back by the tailgate. That's going to be huge. <coughs> for fairly that, large, uh, fairly large. That's going to be and huge. Obviously out of the weather. Um, and then, of course, something I think will be a maintenance issue. I think it's going to be a problem. It's kind of like, I look at it kind of like the Falcon doors on the X. I predicted that would be a problem. Guess what? It's been a huge problem. Yeah. And this is going to be the problem on the pickup truck is the slatted electric tonneau, which is your wheelhouse, I, that goes up. And then it goes down behind the glass, and there's a cylinder it mm -hmm, rolls mm -hmm, up in mm -hmm. um, underneath the bed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, I predict, going to be the number one maintenance issue now, on the vehicle is this, uh, 
kind of overdone tonneau, but it is a key piece of the design because of a lot of things. One is aerodynamics. Now, for the same reason, your mm -hmm, copper, design. what do you call it? A uh, tonneau cover, bed cover, bed First cover, bed cover. Uh, was a, a big thing just for um, mileage and efficiency. Now, but the other thing is security. You want to be able to throw stuff in the back of the your truck, stuff up. stop by and run into the grocery store and not come out and find all of it stolen. Now, they had a few of those roll-ups uh -huh. in the industry, uh -huh. and uh, they kind of caught on a little bit, but you know what happened to them? What? A little bit of water would trickle inside the mechanisms, uh -huh. and on cold nights it would freeze up and lock them up. So the only thing I would tell you is I'd make sure that thing was weather sealed mm -hmm. where water couldn't get into any of the devices. You How know? about dust? I know. How about mud? I know. How about insects? How about leaves? Leaves? Maybe it's just... going to be a nightmare. It's going to yeah. be a maintenance. It'll be the maintenance issue with the truck, but it's one of its coolest features. Mm -hmm. And I don't know another way to uh, do what they're doing. The security advantage mm -hmm. and the aerodynamic advantage is such that it's a it's, absolutely it, necessary it's, it's function. It actually goes cab height, so it is uh, where you would have tall storage that would uh -huh. uh, much taller than a flat bed cover. So you would put a few items back there. It's kind of like roll top desks. Yep. You know, nearly twenty percent of those worked, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they did work. You know, I guess. Well, for a while. No, no. Uh, it was 20% at any one time. No. Uh, worked. And yeah. they're great, except no. they, don't work. <laughs> they don't work, which is why they got rid but, of it. You know, I, yeah, I, still, I, it, it is a half of a camper, half of a tunnel, so you have a fairly large amount of cubic space back there you could fill up with stuff. Let's get back to the Marlboro Man. Okay. A manly truck manly is man. a truck you can take off road, like when you go to the dentist or mm -hmm. when you go to the grocery store or the mm -hmm. dry cleaners. Mm -hmm. You need yeah. to be able to go off road. Mm -hmm. uh, this puppy's a Hummer. Yeah. A Ford F-150, the tricked out 4x4 four mm -hmm. four version Super Crew cab, has 9.6 inches of ground clearance. Mm -hmm. This has a... Uh, uh, the air shock absorbers, mm -hmm. which I've got on my 2013S, uh, where you can raise and lower it. So you which can I squat like it down, be a Mexican lowrider, or you can raise uh -huh. it up. Get in uh, and out. Motor Trend it? estimates about a 14 inch throw and 16 inches of ground clearance. That's, That's a like a Hummer. I mm. think the Hummer H1 was 16 inches. Yeah. So it makes a big difference in off-roading that that uh the bottom i bet it's smooth too the uh the approach and departure angles which are both bigger mm -hmm. than the uh, mm -hmm. ford f-150 but the ground clearance is a huge deal mm -hmm. and um absolutely and underneath that i'm told that it's all armored that's, a, that's it's, what it's all yeah. covered you can't get at the motors you can't get at the batteries it's a skid plate, nah. and that's uh, so specifically on the things that define a pickup truck, and I'm surprised Elon Musk even knew what they were, mm -hmm. but he's got it, and that's this off-road uh, capability and this uh, um, tough, yeah. durable um, huh. manly kind of uh, gig. Yeah. Now, who buys trucks and what do they use them for? It's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> they probably not for How often think. do they use the off-road? That isn't any of your business. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's right. <laughs> you're you're messing in somebody else's business there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not... The, this is... A, and automobiles generally are an image... An identity device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What you actually use it for, I don't know, put it in the backyard and use it as an extra bedroom for the grandkids. Uh -huh. That's none of your business as yeah. a manufacturer. <laughs> That's right. And not that, yeah.
but he hit all the right notes mm -hmm. on here is a truck you can take a sledgehammer to. Don't mm -hmm. use little chrome balls. That's the, no, that, no, that dog doesn't hunt. <laughs> but a sledgehammer is okay. Uh. And you can beat this truck all you want, and it doesn't even show damage. Mm -hmm. And that goes for lightweight traffic incidents, too. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you're not going to hurt the Pop truck. Into a tree out in the woods. Or... And it has an off road capability in case you ever did accidentally roll it up into the front lawn <laughs> of your imagine. house some drunken evening. Well, you know, I better get back on a logging road. Or As we've whatever. said here at EVTV for years, let's get liquored up and play with some high voltage, voltage and go for a ride. Yeah, go for a ride. Okay. And <laughs> So if you did accidentally roll your Tesla truck up onto the front lawn, mm -hmm. it'll clear the flower. That will. No. And so that's a big deal. Um, other than that, the stock dove $20 today. Owie. All the, about 3%, all the critics are chortling that uh -huh. Tesla has this huge miss. And I couldn't be more delighted. Mm -hmm. Tesla has wow. a huge hit. I tried four times last night mm -hmm. to register my $100 uh, sign up, and their server simply was cratered. Wow. This morning, I was able to slip one in. Uh, the $100 is a huge mistake. Like I say, he really screwed this unveil up. Worse than I've ever seen anybody do anything. Focus and groups. completely <laughs> out of character with Elon Musk. Throw the focus groups away. Go with, yeah. go with your gut. Uh. $100 sign up. What is that? Oh. It's like a Nissan Leaf sign up uh. from 2011. This doesn't mean anything. You can't make any claim at all. Should have made it a $5,000 non-refundable. That would separate the men from the boys. Separate the men from the boys. Yeah. Oh. This is like making the statement that I don't think anybody's really going to want this truck, but I want a lot of people to sign up and look like they do since it's only cost mm -hmm. 100 bucks. Yep. I, I think it's as lame and girlish a move as I've ever seen Elon Musk make. No. It no. was positively effeminate while he's introducing the Marlboro man's truck. Mm -hmm. It should have been $5,000 non-refundable. If we don't ever make it, you don't even get your money back. <laughs> and see how many that it registered. Um, they're going to announce next week or something that they did a half a million registrations. And every, all the critics are going to say, what's that? It's a hundred bucks. It's risk free. Mm -hmm. So again, Lame, little, and late. Well, everything he touches seems to flip around on him. So well, you I, just never know. His mistakes turn out to be wins. A I lot think of times. this will. Uh, all the whining about the uh, um, design. Uh, a year, two years from now, certainly, uh, they'll be inducting him into some sort of holeshouser, into some sort of designer's mm. hall of fame. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm for finally pulling off the XY design mm -hmm. you're talking mm -hmm. about. Yep. Um, uh, dramatically changing manufacture of pickup yep. trucks. Yep, absolutely. And doing the iconic pickup truck of all time that will be in every movie, mm -hmm. every TV show, certainly Blade for the Runner. rest of my life. All of them. There, there uh, won't, there'll be comedy shows that'll be featuring uh -huh. this truck in it somehow. And you won't mm -hmm. be able to turn on a camera in the United States yep. from here on without having a cyber truck roll through the mm -hmm. background somehow. Yep. It's just not going to be possible. Yep. It'll make the DeLorean look like the Metropolitan. Yep. It's, uh, it, it, this is absolutely a one-way trip. And um, I, almost everyone I've talked to about it was initially in shock and horror. I, and then it wasn't so bad. Yeah. How did you go through this? The very first thing I looked at was this apparently is the concept 
uh, hook their idea truck out their image, but it wasn't the production unit. The production unit was going to be behind it. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little more traditional. So, Boy, well, hey, hey, but I I grasp it very fast. But no, I thought it was the. They always have people. the option of um, introducing a uh, Ford F one hundred and fifty electrified. Speaking of which, he's absolutely now officially panicked. All You're OEM. Right. Ice I'm not so sure you're not going to see a. Yeah. In the last month, Volkswagen has uh, announced. Of course, they are the king of press releases. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of a big announcement. $800 million addition in Chattanooga, Tennessee, just to make electric cars. Mm -hmm. Ford is absolutely the weirdest response. They got a new CEO two years ago. He has. He's, uh, he's kind of hip. He's kind of hip. He's kind of hip, you know. I mean. So he's, they've announced they're going to do an electric Ford uh, Mustang pickup truck. Oh, Ford, okay. And then the week before this announcement, pointedly, mm -hmm. they announced the Ford Mustang Mach E. Mach E, yep. <laughs> and I've never seen anything like this. It is a dead. Totally dead rip off copy of Ford Model Y. Yep. With a pony on it. Yep. Uh, it has five seats instead of seven. Mm hmm. It's uh, got a lower range, a higher price. There's nothing about it that's even competitive. But blue, it is it their blue. Model Y. Uh, chase car. To get, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. And, uh, of course, they announced their uh, electric Ford F-150 coming soon to a theater near you. More than and, once. And they've yeah. invested $500 million in the mm -hmm. Rivian, um, their RT-1 pickup truck. So they're fighting back. And the day before this unveil, uh, General Motors announced their uh, electric pickup truck uh, 2021. Better, better catch up. But, but I tell you where he, I think the production cost is where he's, and he's got battery production, but that that ability to work with those flat sheets is probably going to shake some trees in Detroit. I would be surprised if they don't have an answer for that, too. I think it'll make a difference, Richard, but the, the moats are so commonly known they're discounted. Ford is going to do a deal with free charging in their charging network for the first two years. Mm -hmm. Here's a flash. They don't have a freaking charging network. They're working on it. No, they're renting one and doing this and doing that. The best that it will be available is a uh, chat emo uh, mm -hmm. charge. It's not... Even in the same league with Tesla, mm -hmm. Tesla's now got 1,465 charge locations, about 15,000 charge ports, uh, and mm -hmm. are upgrading to um, a, a new version that can do up to 250 kilowatts from their current 120 kilowatt superchargers, which work fine. Mm-hmm. And yep. so it's uh, uh, that moat of those uh, uh, charging network is enormous. And then, of course, you have the batteries. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they and can produce they are, them. are so out, far out ahead that now the the girls doing all the Tesla rah rah videos are just going completely. They've got everything mixed up into one massive ball of John Goodenough and Maxwell and yeah. Jeff Dan, and and they're they're just in a clitoral fibrillation <laughs> over this battery thing that is exciting, but it isn't all of that stuff uh, all balled together. Well, if you did have one of those devices, a really good battery. For a really good clitoral fibrillator, it might work. I don't yeah, know. well, that might, might work. 
Um, they are going to do a battery event. It is kind of exciting. Um, there's a, a couple of things coming together. And the biggest one is Jeffrey Don's new um, electrolyte. Absolutely. A combination. Yeah. A little bit of an advance with some large crystal form uh, cathode materials, but it's been separately confirmed by the University of Pennsylvania that ethylene carbonate, the electrolyte that gives it that pear smell, mm -hmm. actually has been the culprit all along in uh, dendrite formation. Wow. Yeah. And uh, these are lithium metallic dendrites on the anode that shorten the battery life. Jeffrey Don has a two-part electrolyte now that doesn't have any of that, mm -hmm. which um, results in a battery life of about 5,000 cycles compared to 800 cycles. That's, that's a big gain. It's that's a, a huge gain. Huge. It's the million mile it's battery. It's the million mile, mile, yeah. And then, um, the Maxwell dry cathode process is strictly a manufacturing process gain mm -hmm. that lets you turn the speed of making battery cells up wow. to 11, yep. which is Elon and Musk times things on his line right. by millimeters per second or meters per mm -hmm. second flow. And those ovens were the slowdown on battery cells. And all those chemicals, air chemicals, oh my God, organic yes. material. Yeah, yes. it was that a was mess. an EPA nightmare, yeah. distillation, needless complexity, had... square footage in the factory, and so forth. Um, yeah. So, one element of it makes it much easier to manufacture cells, and the other element of it makes the cells last much longer. Mm. And between the two of them, and some sort of cathodic material adjustments. Uh, we're looking at a higher density and much longer lived battery. And, a and I believe changer. Tesla is going to bring the manufacture of cells in house and achieve a more deeply vertically integrated control over the mm -hmm. manufacture of batteries. Oh. Um, this is all. Tremendously good, and it's uh, again uh, just a huge barrier mm -hmm. between them and their competitors who are out shopping for batteries. Yes, yeah. and how they're going to make them if they get any numbers rolling? All right, and how? Yeah, how they're going to get them? How they going to get it? What, what if they sell a car and people buy it? Yeah. Now what? They, uh, luckily, they haven't had. Too well, much they haven't had too much of that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, six they months can, ago, the Jaguar I Pace and the Audi e Tron. E Tron. E Tron. That was a movie. E Tron. That wasn't uh, a movie. Uh, they had declining U.S. sales no. now, dipping down into the sub 500 car no. a month no. No. Uh, range. It's, it's, it didn't no. make it. They can buy 500. Didn't batteries. make the cut. Mm -mm. Now, they either have this huge battery contract and obligation. Or had people bought fifty thousand a month, they wouldn't be able to get those yeah. batteries. So it's um, uh, it's a problem for Tesla. It's a huge problem for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So their lead in battery technology is enormous. Their lead huge. in um, yep. charging networks is enormous, and you cannot press release yourself past those two pieces of ground. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. And so um, this is uh, actually going to be embarrassing in some ways. But it was very interesting this week to see them valiantly fighting back with press releases. That works. Of cars that someday will be available. And the pickup truck guys are now officially terrified. Remember, it's a guy with a mouse, and he pushes the mouse, and he makes them. He makes line. reality disappear. If, makes, if they think, if they say it on camera, it's truth. Yep. And so, it's not true. Um, well, is it something to aspire to? Yes, they need to aspire pretty quickly, mm -hmm, or yeah. they're literally not going to make it. Understand, the Ford Mach E, Ford just announced in the last two years that they're getting out of cars completely and going to mm -hmm. focus on trucks. 
Here, Elon attacks pickup trucks, which is 20% of the vehicles sold in the United States. In the UK and Europe, this is a non-event. No, they don't have roads for pickup trucks. They don't have people wanting pickup trucks. Pickup trucks don't work there. This is an American thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here in the U.S. of A., we drive pickup trucks. Boldly. Boldly. Manly trucks. Manly trucks. Built Ford but Tough. With a gun rack, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you need a gun rack. Hey, I, I didn't see the gun rack. Well, I be, missed that option. That's an opportunity. You can Here be you back go. instead somebody of doing out. toppers. You can do gun Maybe racks. somebody can make a gun rack for the truck. The, uh... Uh, if he doesn't put enough power in that electrical thing, we're going to slap yeah. a uh, Power Safe 60 in the back, yeah. charge it off his thing, yeah. and uh, be able to deliver yeah. immense amounts of power. Um, in, the, in the meanwhile, uh, we may have to switch and do it out of stainless steel so it'll match. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, that's it. I think they're going to have a week and a half to two weeks of relief, mm -hmm. and they're all going to decry the Tesla Cybertruck as uh, no longer a threat because it's obviously doesn't even look like a truck. Doesn't look though. No. And uh, about two weeks out, it's going to start to sink in. Here's the deal, guys. Mm -hmm. This is what trucks look like now. Yeah. And your designs oh, uh. are so 20th century. Mm hmm. And you're in the wrong freaking century. <laughs> and, those, yep, and those customers aren't going to be here for that much longer. Uh -huh. The new ones are coming up. And they want uh, gadgets. I, now, one thing we didn't cover was the uh, power storage. Mm -hmm. uh, running a house or a small business or operation, you have 240 volts coming out of that. How many watts? Well, that's what we need to know. See, they didn't bother to talk know. about that in the unveil. They never mention the battery size. Mm -mm. They never mention the motor sizes. They mention the range, which is graven in jello and subject to your interpretation with your right foot anyway. But and they never said how, how what the capacity of the air compressor was, what the capacity of the thing was. Mm. I'm predicting that the inverter in this uh, truck is going to be a little weeny three thousand watt inverter. I hope not. And we're going to build a stainless steel power safe 60 that slides, slides right, right in back, the back in the back and uses that to recharge us. You drive up to your house, plug in the house, yeah. unplug the house, go back to work, get charged up. All right. Now, what the they fantasy. should do, Elon, is make sure that's a 10 or 12 kilowatt yeah. inverter working off that main battery. That's the way to do it. It's but, not that much more. That's a little weight, I guess, but it can't be that it's much It's a 5,000 pound pickup truck. Yeah. Get over it. Yep. But he never mentioned anything about what that might be. As I say, it was the lamest unveil. It didn't even have the basic specs laid out. Um, we kind of know it's about 75 inches tall, but about 241 inches long. <laughs> You know, uh, but we don't, you never even mentioned but the curb weight. Here's the deal. It's brilliant because it's all screwed up, and then it's even going to get more press. People bashing it and messing with it. So it may come out as a big victory. It's they terrible. were coming out bashing it the day of the unveil when it hadn't been unveiled yet. Yeah. There is a gal named Claudia Assist with Market Watch that could find something wrong with Tesla if she was nipple deep in it. Just, I, it's like she's a professional Tesla basher. Mm -hmm. They're out there. And and just make up stuff out of whole cloth. I know. That uh, as uh, analysts are not sure if you should be risking your money on Tesla, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to So keep, uh, I think there's going to be a two-week uh, pause Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be uh, viewed as entirely positive. Although it's going to be kind of tough to live down this girlish unveil uh, with wardrobe they malfunctions. Needed, you know, like a uh, WWE fighter out there with a, 
armband on his bicep or something. You bet. Man, Hulk Hogan like and the uh, Tesla. Do it over again. You it, can do a do-over, I guess. His instincts were exactly right. Mm -hmm. And then he just did a fail from inadequate preparation. Yep. On the uh, Never do something that's not on the script. The... Uh, well, I won't say that, but you need the ball to bounce off the windows. <laughs> you but you ought to have money. the basic info included in this thing about hiding. Uh, they're getting into this. They don't want to talk about battery sizes. And mm -hmm. Why not? People like to they talk about that. Storage. Give them a number. What yeah. the hell difference yeah. does it make? Yeah. The, uh, well, it's obvious. Yeah. I assume it's, yeah. It would have hinted at so what they were doing. For, to do what? Competition. The competition. I know. I the don't whole know. world thinks they're competing with them. They can run better press releases than Tesla can. They just can't build the cars. That's the brilliance of it. It's so. not too big a deal. Their competition is not their competition. I know. Mm -hmm. Having access to such information of how many kilowatt hours the battery is. I bet it's going to be big. How many horsepower the motor is. Which, that's a lot of horses, by the way. <laughs> Why do you want to, like, not mention that? We don't want to talk about that. Why not? <laughs> it's on a need. Everybody else wants to talk about it. They're going to talk about it anyway. Why don't you give them the number and tell them to shut up, go away, talk uh, Apparently, about it. he doesn't know it yet. I don't know. He doesn't know it yet. You know, he knows it. Wow. Um, the, um, and so I uh, think it was the most horrible unveil of, uh, yeah. and I agree with Elon, the most exciting product they've ever done, just as a halo product. Mm -hmm. that they make it at all. It will yeah. be on screen and on film and on YouTube yeah. for the next 50 years. It's a, a collectible. Absolutely. On that would be my next. On announcement. On announcement. Absolutely. Before like, the first one ever rolls. You're right. It is a collectible car be, uh, beyond any uh, there's, comprehension. There's 100,000 people that are going to park it in the garage. <coughs> Keep yeah. it forever. Yep. You should buy one Just and have it hermetically sealed yep. for your great grandchildren. Yep. Absolutely. In a, a nitrogen environment. Yes. Herme yep. I would say that for sure. And uh, it's uh, there. It's just an, an instant classic. Um, and I believe that it's a matter of acculturation mm -hmm. on the actual visual design of it. I think people will really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, once they get used to the idea, it was a bit of a surprise. I buy other, yeah, put some st jazzy stuff on, like some skins and some tiger stripes or a few of them really dressed up. Some daffodils. Yeah. Some maybe little pony. Leopard skin. Little or pony vinyls. Something, little bodies yeah. on there, you know, and uh, maybe throw a few fishing poles in the Candy back. Candy land scenes. Yeah. Fishing yeah. poles in the back. Pulling a real man's uh, John boat, you know, the girl in real, like, little fighter leather bathing suit or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Wild hair, like one of those fighter girls. Everybody was cool. excited about the ATV. Yeah. Well, um, I had the ATV in there, but it. I'm going to mention didn't one thing. Finish it. This is a guy secret. It is a conspiracy, yeah. and it's gone on for years. If you get a chance to get on one of those ATVs, pass. Mm -hmm. They've killed tens of thousands of people. They've people here right Paralyzed here. tens of thousands of people. And guys don't talk about it at all. Nope. And women don't even acknowledge that it's ever no, been. I've had yeah, this is like the dirty secret of vehicles across the land is altering vehicles, and we have, they're deadly. And we have uh, you're better off here. on a motorcycle, a two-wheel no, no. device, than an ATV. They just flip on people and kill them no. all the time. You that can't right get off yeah. of them like you can a motorcycle, and they land on top of you no. and break your little neck. And uh, it, this is like a Duck Dynasty conspiracy. Mm-hmm. To I, never mention this, but these things are absolutely deadly. Don't touch one no. indoors. Don't put your finger on it. They, they are absolutely a death trap. Mm -hmm. um, they're, uh, just don't even touch them.
I don't know. Uh, and boy, do fathers and sons like to go out and try to They're sacrifice everywhere. either the son or the father as kind of a male bonding thing mm -hmm. all the time. I see. Yep. They're a tragedy. Yep. And I would ride one up into the bed of the Tesla truck. That's a good point. I mean, I would. They're dangerous. Now, that's my opinion. Your mileage may vary. I know all the ATV guys will go crazy. They're kind of switching over. It goes back to the towing. A lot of these guys are switching over to the side by sides. Yeah, the little mini things. Uh huh. So, I, I, I think it's going to be a lot about trailering. Just mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, that's most of what I see guys getting drugs for. Uh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what they do. They buy, they put their toy on back. And there's I don't see any problem. Uh, throwing a fifth wheel mount in mm -mm. the back of that mm -mm. thing. I don't mm -mm. even think that'll be a thing. Mm -mm. Um, so that's about it. Uh, recall, if you will, our tragic tale of Wayne Reavers and the uh, Hurricane Dorian mm -hmm. in Abaco that Island and so forth. Uh, well, we have a bit better story from Walter Crumbly in My Costa hero. Rica. In Costa Rica. And he sent us some uh, uh, footage of his whole setup, and he now has part of his solar panels up, his power safe, and is enjoying reliable power. God bless To the, the man. point that uh, people from the utility grid and the government down there are coming to get a tour of this Pretty device neat. Neat. Uh, in some amazement. Let's take a look at Walter. with you. I moved to Costa Rica about eight years ago to try to fix some of the problems we were having with a vacation home rental business my partner and I had set up. But I also had the personal goal to try to establish a totally self-sufficient firm. I wanted to produce my own food, my own energy, my own water. So I started with hydroponics but pretty quickly went to aquaponics which is raising plants with fish waste. That was going pretty good until I realized the electrical system here, best described as fragile, is a long extension cord through the jungle and was prone to outages lasting three or four hours and sometimes multiple outages a day. You've got trees blowing over and mudslides, so some of the causes. My stocking densities are pretty high, so it's necessary to run the filter and air pumps 24 hours a day and after an hour of no power, the fish are gasping at the surface for air. I tried some simple projects in the beginning, like this wind generator, but I discovered that the wind's just simply not consistent enough to provide me with a continuous 500 watts of power. I was experimenting with a Tesla battery pack to use as a storage unit for an inverter, and was very encouraged by my initial results. As I was trying to perfect that, I ran across Jack's website while looking for a BMS system. In March 2018, after discovering the EBT website, I wrote Jack a letter asking him to help me design a power wall that would work for my purposes. As I recall, he told me I was a little crazy, that the 18650s were dangerous batteries, and I would probably burn my house down. But then, shortly after that, he came up with a plan, and after some discussion, the PowerSafe 100 project was started. 
In August of 2018, I flew to the U.S. and had the pleasure of meeting Jack at the EVTV facility in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And what a wonderful experience that was. Cape Girardeau is a very friendly, beautiful little city. The EVTV facility is like a massive version of my garage. Projects all over the place. The staff was great. I got to see the original PowerSafe 100 up and running. We had a wonderful lunch of Kentucky Fried Chicken. I got my first ride in a Tesla Model S. I learned about the fine art of slow cooking pork barbecue and how to kill flies with salt. In March 2019, Jack and EBTV completed and shipped the power safe to me in Tampa, Florida, where it was loaded into a container and I started the process of shipping it to Costa Rica. It arrived in July, finally, and I think the total cost for shipping this container over, which contained the power safe, 40 solar panels and their associated microinverters and two generators cost about 35,000 in shipping and duties. I think the government gave me a good discount on the duty as we classified it as an uninterruptible power supply, which has a little bit better weight. It took a few days to drag the container up the side of the mountain and, and then to uncrate the power safe. The packaging was amazing and we had enough raw materials after uncrating it to build some employee housing. And finally, after removing all the packaging, we turned the power safe on and I was amazed to see that after sitting in that container for five months, it still had 93.5% state of charge. Just incredible. I wanted to give the solar component of this system a test, so I installed 10 of the 40 panels on the roof of my house. I'm going to be tearing this house down probably in about six months and building a new one with a lot more roof area. But I really just wanted to try out the solar system. So I used the space I had available and with the help of my friend, Walter Martinez, we built a grid work out of lumber and attached 10 solar panels to it. It took about eight hours and I was quite pleased with the outcome. The next day I installed the combiner box and wiring and we connected the system and I was just amazed that it worked perfectly from the very beginning. On October 18th, I was disconnected from the grid, and these are the results. At the end of October, I got a nice email from Enlighten telling me that my carbon offset for October was 250 pounds, the equivalent of three trees. I produced 164 kilowatt hours during those 13 days Plus I used about 40 of the 50 kilowatt hours I had in the power safe at the start. So that was a total of 204 kilowatt hours over 13 days, 16.4 kilowatt hours a day. The aquaponic system uses almost 10 kilowatt hours of this. The energy cost of the power safe is not reflected in the in-phase site as the solar array is connected to the output of the power safe and it considers the power safe the grid. So far, the month of November has not been a great month for solar. At the end of October, I fully charged the power safe with 63 kilowatts of energy produced by generator. That took 10 gallons of diesel, and the resulting cost was about 58 cents a kilowatt hour. When I started the month with a full battery, it's the eighth day and we're at 52%. The solar array has only produced about 68 kilowatt hours so far, so I've used this month about 120 kilowatt hours total, averaging about 15 kilowatt hours a day. It's a little less than normal, but we've had some lower temperatures and a few hours on the generator while I cleaned up some wiring, it probably had an effect. It shows that 10 panels won't quite do it, but 40 certainly will, and probably enough to operate an electric vehicle as well. This is the uh, plan for the new house and the solar array. It took a few weeks of digging around to get familiar with the system, to get the configuration set up properly, to do some experiments on how best to set it up here. Jack was very patient with me through this process, and I found that the manuals he wrote for the systems really contain all the information necessary. 
but it is necessary to read them maybe a couple of times to make sure you get it all. We had some initial heat problems, but that was remedied by tightening all the connections. Probably on the 3,500 something mile trip, they loosened up a bit. And then I made the incredibly stupid error of feeding the output of the power safe into the input. And that was something that the Siganeer inverter did not like at all. I thought that perhaps I had some damage to components, the IVT current sensor, or maybe the battery monitoring system. But in the end, we just had a couple of bad connections. And once those were remedied, the system started working perfectly and it's been working perfectly ever since. Another thing I discovered in the original installation was that initially I set it back underneath my porch. Power safe probably had 10 feet of roof over it in all directions. And I was relatively confident that it was going to stay reasonably dry there. And it's this big Wegman enclosure with the gasket and all. I thought even if a little water got in or around it, it wouldn't be a problem. I was totally wrong with that. And on the second day it was installed, we had a storm blow through and the rain was going sideways. It leaked through the Raspberry Pi display and totally ruined that display. So just to mention, the PowerSafe 100 is not waterproof and it should be installed in a dry location. I was grateful that with this order I had Richard put together a spares kit consisting of one of everything inside the power safe with the exception of the batteries. Changing the display was a quick and easy job and setting up the new one was equally easy. I did have to install the on and off switch for the display and as you can see it's stopped again and very simple just to recycle it and then the display comes back up in a couple of minutes and works. We have a problem here with the internet. It just goes out. I don't know why, but the effect of that is the same as if I had turned off the router. It just clicks. So the switch was good. I don't have to open the door 20 times a day to reset the Raspberry Pi display. My best solar day so far has been 18.19 kilowatt hours for the day. If I had perfect weather every day, I'd be shutting off the microinverters after lunch every day. But it's rainy season here. And I would say that the average is closer to 10 to 12 kilowatt hours a day. And sometimes multiple days in a row with little or no production. In the initial discussion about the size of the power safe, I had mentioned to Jack that I hope to buy an electric vehicle one day and I hope to be charging it from the system. I was thinking initially about a 30 kilowatt hour system and he strongly recommended a 100 kilowatt hour system, which I got and I'm extremely grateful I did. He was absolutely correct. I'm not charging an electric car right now, but I have about six days worth of energy stored in the power safe in the event the sun doesn't come out for a few days. So Jack, I just want to say thank you so much. This worked out amazingly well. There were days in the past where my house looked like a discotheque with the lights going on and off for hours. The refrigerator constantly tripping the thermal overload trying to restart. Fish gasping at the surface for air. It used to be every time the power went out I would have to drive back here, manually open the gate, start the generator, throw the transfer switch, and then when the power came back, repeat the process, sometimes two or three times a day. It just got old. And now, it's history. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Jack. What have you been doing this week, Richard? You know, I had uh, several shipments, got a power safe, out early. We got all the power safe it's RVs done. done. Got them done. You got one that's finished sitting Born's there and goes finished, out Monday. Goes out Monday. So that yeah, was so. a big deal. And yeah. uh, we have been uh, taking care of the new interns. We'll uh -huh. have some new people that maybe will pop up on the camera. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, training them and showing them some of the stuff. So yeah, we're getting into we're getting kind of awful lot of fabrication around here. I had always seen that in our future, but it's... Uh,
That's kind of fun. We have new blood here, and they've been very enthusiastic. So we ought to do like Zach and Jesse, and like sell T-shirts and stuff. We might come up with that. I'm working on a coffee mug. I got engaged, by the way. We need something that isn't all this work and this reverse engineering, electronic (laughs) software stuff, (laughs) and and then this fabrication stuff. We need to like sell T-shirts or or trees. We need to get greener and sell trees or... Uh, How about a recyclable shopping bag? Recyclable they don't have to use the plastic bags when they go. How, sure. how about macaroni-based soda straws? I've heard that. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, uh, that's Kids like thing. them. Oh. Uh, we could do something like that. Uh, just something that doesn't require we'll all this fabrication and software coding and... Uh, uh, hole cutting. That's what. Actually, hole we spend a lot of time. We spend a lot of time. And I spent a lot of time somewhere. buying mm-hmm. bits and saw. Imagine saw my horror when the Cybertruck came out in 301. You can't was cut a hole in it. You, uh, just, you can't you even will draw have a hole. to uh, lube the end of the drill bit. No, we can have to get slow. laser That'd plasma cutters or something mm-hmm. uh, to uh, do anything like that. It would just be a nightmare. So, uh, yeah, we ought to sell T-shirts and uh, get we us We tried a, that a little bit. We could get a Patreon account where people could just mm-hmm. give us money for nothing. There you go. You know, we are saving polar bears. Where it would just be your opportunity to send us, like, money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we'd be, what, grateful? We would be grateful. See, we my, are my mind message. just doesn't work that way. I the new gospel. I can't do that. So you'd be, we'd be grateful and you'd be broke. Mm-hmm. How does that work? It would be a little from a lot of people. Yeah. Not a lot from a few people. Yeah. And we're spreading the good news. In yeah. a way. So, my yeah. real. Oh, you know, I guess. Well, we'll give that some thought. Maybe a T-shirt. We got new... Uh, Jackets because it got cold. What do you think? Shop we jackets. look like uh, uh, Corporal With pockets. Uh, Sergeant uh, what's his, Schultz uh-huh. on uh-huh. Uh, Hogan's Heroes. Which I have an interesting story. I bought them for the guys so they would not get dirty and say warm around the shop. Except they're so nice looking, they don't want to wear them around the shop. So they fold them up uh-huh. and look uh-huh. at them so they don't get dirty. I think they're nice. They you are did nice. Good. Good Great. Deal. That's uh, that's my color. We may have to offer those on the way. Yep, maybe you'll have to yeah, offer cheap. those. Yeah. They're not cheap, so they're not. No, they're not real cheap. Yeah. But we could put some up there, fan by ass. I'll you know, we don't really do cheap very well. Uh, no, no, we don't. So no. they do T-shirts. We should do you know, a real nice shop like, jacket, like a jacket. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'll get working on. It. Yep, get working on that. How much they cost and how much we can sell them for. And okay. So Embroidery so with the uh, EVTV mm-hmm. official logo. Not, we've liked them. They we don't care. Them. We put now you know. Now you know. Yep. There you go. Or um, hyper hyper change. Yeah. No. I wear them every day. I mean, I, I love it. I don't. I don't know what it says. I can't see myself. See, again, CBTV. I'm on the inside looking out, it's like the truck. I'm not on the outside looking in. That's I don't right. care what it says. They're looking at you. You're looking at the truck interior. <laughs> what difference? I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see mm-hmm, if mm-hmm, I was looking mm-hmm. back to see if she was looking back at me. There you go. There and you it go. was plain to see. There you go. That's right. It was an old country western song. Thank you, Walter. We don't really Hello, have Walter. any actual news or progress to report. Uh, none of our- I've been counting off the hours till the big unveil, and it was a uh, brilliant. Fiasco beyond oh, yeah. belief. I thought it was. I was howling the whole time and watching the crowd as they were actually weeping and screaming and I shrieking know. in terror. Was uh, it was just too much fun. I know. They should have had like a little ramp on the. Elon was a, a shit show to watch, but then the crowd was just. <laughs> they were. Yeah. They were in shock and awe and disbelief and horror and. Uh, all these emotions uh, with what uh, looked to me like no knowledge of where they, they were, were at or what had happened. In breathless anticipation. Yes. And he put, turned a fire hose he, on the yeah. whole crowd and closed them down. He changed the, he and, changed uh, the mood. It uh, yeah. was a big mood swing. I yeah, it was a big mood swing. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. I uh, believe the truck is going to be wildly successful. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think he actually, his instincts hit it on exactly the right note. Mm -hmm. A tough, durable, manufacturable truck at a price that's competitive. How do you go wrong with that? And we'll pull and your it camper doesn't look up like any side. pickup truck you've ever seen. Uh, it's brilliant. It was mm -hmm. a brilliant stroke. Mm -hmm. So horribly delivered, I've never seen anything like it. I think it works, though, see, because I don't. The I mistake thought it was just horrible. We'll get so much. I'm not really so coverage. much into the window mistake. It was his reaction to the window mistake that. You know, I, I thought he was going to walk off stage. Uh, well, he did basically. Uh, that's what he got. He chopped it. the whole president. The whole thing wasn't thirty minutes then, and he I just don't blame left. Him. Uh, he was disgusted, and uh, you know, I, and didn't. then he had a discussion with somebody, probably at fairly high decibel. Oh, do you think so? I think he had a discussion you think he with somebody. It to someone? He probably mentioned it to some of the staff. If and you it was don't very have forcefully communicated in every uh, successful. Uh, entrepreneurial organization, their lies at the heart of it, an the, autocratic, dictatorial, tyrannical, detail obsessed, um, mm -hmm. obsessive compulsive fanatic mm -hmm. who's almost unbearable to be in the room with. Yep. If you don't know who that is, and it's you, probably you. And if you didn't start out that way, You'll end up that way. <laughs> well, or you'll fail. You'll fail, that's right. And I think uh, Elon's got it down to a fine art. He does. And uh, people always talk about uh, uh, all the people that have left him. Yep. There might have been some last I've, night. I've been in this. They'll be thinking about him the rest of his that's their right. lives. And they'll be checking back 20 years later to see how he was doing. Yep, yep. Because uh, it's he'll be just here. an experience yeah. you can't. Yep. You go to the next job and they want to show up on time and make money. Mm -hmm. What's what the hell about is that? that? No, what's the real mission? Yeah. No, that is the, the real, real mission. mission. Yep. No, what are we going to do to take over the world? What are you talking about? Yeah. We sell pizza. Yep. <laughs> we sell plumbing fittings. Uh, we sell plumbing. We're going to sell more of them. I know. Maybe we ought to get a website. I know. Uh, he's uh, yeah. Stay with us. There'll be more EV TV to come, and I am going to predict there's going to be a lot more Elon Musk to come. And the final story on the Cybertruck is going to be so much fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Mark my words, and I want my truck. We're ready. I, yeah.